Hi all, I am Sven, NetSuite Certified Consultant at uh, Node Blue, and uh, thank you for your time. Today uh, I will be giving you a quick overview of how you can close the financial year by using NetSuite. And if you have any specific questions or you want to reach out to us, uh, then please contact uh, us uh, based on the contact details that will be given at the end of um, the video. So, um, you know, in NetSuite, you can uh, either close a financial year or uh, just a financial period. Uh, both processes are pretty much the same. Um, if you try to close just a regular period, then you're being um, given a checklist that you have to go through. Um, and then for closing the financial year, as long as you're using uh, the automatic um, um, close of year, then uh, you're going to be brought to the same to the same checklist for the last period. And then as long as all the periods are closed, um, you can also automatically close the, um, close the year. So um, to start with that, uh, what you have to do is you have to go um, to set up and then accounting and uh, then manage accounting periods. In this case here, uh, you're gonna be brought to a screen like this. And um, if uh, you have set up your accounting year to end in December, like in our account, um, then uh, you can click on the checklist so that you can proceed with uh, closing the last period and then the year will be automatically closed. So looking at this, you're going to be brought to a list like this. And um, looking at uh, NetSuite's documentation, they always say that there is the possibility to automatically close the year or close it manually, where uh, in both cases, there will be pretty much the same end result. It's the same as closing just a regular accounting period, but then there is uh, some offset to um, the retained earnings account, which you can also do manually, but uh, they strongly recommend that you use the automatic close. Um, so, um, allowing NetSuite to automatically close uh, uh, the year uh, so that your books reflect the correct balance in the retained earnings based on the updates you select on the balance sheet. And we're going to take a look at a balance sheet just in a few minutes to see um, how is that different from just closing uh, an accounting, a regular accounting period. So, um, looking at a checklist here, um, you're being given several um, several tasks like locking the AR, the AP, locking everything and so on. Um, and um, by the way, we're being frequently asked by customers whether this checklist can be somehow customized. Um, the answer is actually no, you cannot really customize it, but then NetSuite is smart enough to um, give you exactly uh, the items that you need which means that depending on the modules that are enabled in your NetSuite account, you will have uh, different tasks enabled here in the, in the checklist. So for example, if I take a look, um, a very quick look in a, at another NetSuite account, like this one here, for example, you see you have additional tasks, like for example, um, resolve date period mismatches and review negative inventory and stuff like that. So if, for example, inventory is, um, included in your NetSuite account, then you will be brought to um, these tasks as well. Um, in our case, uh, because uh, the, the, the focus on today's video is how to close the whole financial year, I'm going to go through a short list of those, um, which is for an account that does not have inventory management enabled. And looking into this list, um, if I go to the first task, which is to lock the, um, the accounting period for accounts receivable, I can uh, potentially mark directly all the subsidiaries, like in our small account here, we have two subsidiaries um, as well as one elimination subsidiary. And as long as I hit submit, um, then this one has the status of already completed. So the task that you see here, the green ones mean that you can go through them. The other ones are locked because they are dependent on the previous ones. Um, but then uh, you're actually focusing on this one here that says status, where if you have a green checkbox, then um, you're good to go with the next one. And uh, another very important thing to understand here is what's the difference between closing the whole period and locking the period, um, where uh, closing a period prevents postings for any dates, including in this period by anyone, even an administrator and should be the final step after a process um, of accounts review and reconciliation has been completely um, done. 
whereas locking um, everything or just AR or AP is a little bit different. Locking transactions for a period prevents users without the override permission ex permission explicitly from posting to the period um, and is a, a preliminary task before closing occurs. So in other words, if you lock uh, the AR and the AP as we are doing it right now, um, this would prevent kind of like regular users to um, go ahead and post any kind of documents like, I don't know, vendor bills, payments, um, anything that hits your general ledger here. However, though, um, all administrators or, uh, for example, accounting people with a little bit more permissions will be able to go through the list and do the respective adjustments, which are also uh, creating um, general ledger impact here. So um, looking at the next step here, this is the revalue for in uh, um, open foreign currency balances. And uh, although the period is locked, you can assign the geo code to where adjustments are made, such as uh, FX revaluation. Um, this is, of course, for super user, for accountants with a little bit more of permissions. And this is exactly what we are going to take um, a look at here. So uh, revaluing open foreign currencies, uh, currency balances. Um, if I click on this one, uh, I am uh, given the possibility to proceed with currency revaluation. But just a few words here, first of all, why we do this. Um, and uh, the reason being is that uh, sometimes you do have some open documents, both on the customer side and on the vendor side. Like, for example, on the vendor side, you may have open documents such as vendor bills that you um, already created in NetSuite, but they're still open, um, you did not pay them yet. So before you proceed with payment, um, they're still open. So you have to um, do the currency re revaluation here so that you can uh, define whether there is a gain or loss to, um, to the FX revaluation and post it to the respective account. And uh, looking at what NetSuite is giving us here, this is a list of um, actually all the accounts that are supposed to be um, revaluating in terms of currency. This is a setting on, um, on the account that you can um, toggle whether um, uh, they are entitled to be uh, revaluated on month end. And uh, looking at the fields here, actually, um, there is not much rocket science here. These fields are used for, for filtering. Um, like, for example, you may be um, able to uh, filter by department or, for example, by account type. Like, for example, if I go to just accounts payable, you see that this list um, uh, just shrank like that. Uh, and we only, uh, only see those accounts or, for example, account receivable and so on. So let me go back to all. Um, as um, we're going to go ahead and click save, which is uh, going to process all these accounts here. Um, and as long as in some of them there are amounts that need to be um, revalued, um, then the respective GIA will be hit in terms of gain or loss to um, currency revaluation. Um, so hitting here on save button, um, uh, the process is currently running in the background. And um, once I click refresh, uh, I'll be given a list of, um, of transactions here. Um, uh, like, for example, if I click on one of them, those look a little bit like a, a GE, but actually that's a special type of transaction uh, that will be posting to, um, to the FX uh, gain or loss accounts. So looking at this specific here, um, let's um, take a look at what the geo impact looks like. So I do have obviously three accounts um, that we are crediting with um, some amounts and then the respective uh, debit amount on unrealized currency losses in this case. And depending on your setup, you may have one account for gains and losses or um, you, may have, you, may, you may have uh, more than one account where uh, losses and gains are uh, applied to different accounts. And uh, once we are done, we can click on back and uh, then uh, take a look at whether we have all the transactions. Um, and uh, finally, uh, mark the task as complete. And then we will go back to this uh, screen to proceed with the next steps. And the next one here in the list would be to calculate consolidated exchange rates. Um, so clicking on this one, um, that depends on the setup that you have here. 
Um, so if you have several subsidiaries and you have um, consolidated exchange rates, um, you may be brought to this screen where you can calculate them, like the average, historical, and so on. So again, this is um, pretty much valid if you, if you have a one world account. Um, you can click on calculate to refresh them and finally click on um, back to, to the task. Um, you mark the task as complete and um, then you're done with this one and you go to, to the last one before the ultimate close, which is to eliminate intercompany transactions. And now clicking on this one here, um, this is the intercompany elimination, um, which um, is gonna also create some journal entries behind, you know, behind the scenes. Um, like in this case, uh, those would be journal entries that are related to intercompany elimination. So if you have, like in our case, um, we have one subsidiary that is specifically there for elimination, um, it will post journal entries to this um, elimination subsidiary so that the end result can be eliminated on the top level. Um, once you're done with this and you mark the task as complete, um, then you can proceed to the last one, which is the um, the real close of, of the whole period. Um, clicking on this one, uh, that's actually the, the, the simplest one. You just click on close period. This will close ultimately the, the period here where you see that all the tasks now here are kind of like read only. You cannot really um, click on them. Um, and now there's a little trick here. Um, although this one seems to be uh, still editable and it still says close, um, the reason why um, they left it editable here is that if you want to reopen the period for some uh, reasons, then you can click on this one. Um, you can put some um, justification here, put your name, uh, explain why you're doing this, and then you can reopen the period from here. Um, so if you do that, it will also open all the closed periods that are after this period. So this is not something that you would do on a daily basis. This is only for exceptional cases where you want to adjust something in the system for a closed period. But again, once this is closed and it's locked like this, um, even administrators wouldn't be able to post anything. And the reason behind it is that uh, probably you already submitted your VAT statements and other statements to the institutions. So you wouldn't necessarily uh, want somebody to be adjusting something in the system in the meantime. And uh, by the way, what is the difference between um, transactions that can be edited or not edited in the, in the respective period? So how do we get flagged by the fact that we close this period and then we cannot probably edit um, uh, transactions within it? Uh, there is no explicit warning from NetSuite, but um, probably you've seen one of um, the screens like this one here. Um, so this is a screen with just regular vendor bills. Uh, that's not even a safe search. That's just a very regular um, list of bills. And uh, you've probably seen this sometimes where uh, for some of the records, you do have the edit and view, and then there are some records like this one and this one um, that have just the view mode. So uh, in most cases, the reason behind this is exactly uh, the fact that the period has been um, closed already. Um, so for example, those bills here that are from um, September, you can open them. But once again, um, those that are locked, um, it's even an administrator like me, for example, I'm currently logged in as an administrator, but again, I cannot open um, a record that is not in edit mode for a period that has already been locked. So once again, um, that's the only difference where you can see that you cannot change something in the respective accounting period. There is no other flag that um, warns you that the period has been closed. And now, um, since we're talking here about the year close, what is the difference between just closing the period like this and then closing the whole year? Well, if you close um, the, the end of uh, the year, so the last period in, in the year, um, then NetSuite would automatically uh, create the year end um, adjustments for you. So this is not something that you have to explicitly um, run or push a button to do. As long as this period is closed, then um, the whole year would be closed. And the only difference here is pretty much uh, the retained earnings account. And looking at a balance sheet here that I have um, and scrolling a little bit down here, 
I do see here that I have a retained earnings account and this retained earnings account is not a real account. It's a very specific account. You cannot really post anything to it. It's only like a placeholder. So by using um, uh, this automatic method of closing the year, your general ledger ties to financials for the same periods uh, run for all accounts with the exception of the retained earnings account. So the system posts a placeholder like this here um, uh, that is kind of like a placeholder entry to the retained earnings account on the balance sheet to reflect the income um, for the period run. And NetSuite does not post explicitly the balance to retained earnings because uh, doing so would uh, zero the past income statements and prevent them from being uh, viewed. But instead, um, the income, the net income from prior fiscal years is displayed. It's just displayed on the retained earnings account. This is not an actual posting. And then the net income from the current uh, fiscal year to date is um, displayed uh, in the net income account. And so far, so good. Um, as long as you close the, the final period within the year, you're done with your, with your um, end of year closure and you can uh, proceed running the respective reports. And I hope this demo has been useful for you. Again, uh, thank you for your time. And please, if you have uh, any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Our details will be shown at the end of uh, this video, and you can always reach out to us through your preferred contact method.